know if y'all seen Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story, but chow, I will say this, I'm entertained by the shenanigans. <laughs> but what the, the the people who aren't happy about the Lyle and Eric Menendez story are viewers and Eric Menendez. Because watching it, and I had a feeling this was going to happen, but the overall consensus from people who watched, well, here's the thing. When the whole Lila Eric Menendez story was going on, the Menendez brothers, whatever you want to call it, I was a freaking infant. I didn't know what was going on. I remember like years later, similar to like the whole Jeffrey Dahmer thing, I had become aware of it in school because kids would talk about it. We make jokes about eating people and all this other stuff. Now, when you say stuff like that, now it's like, okay, it's a little cringe. But um, it's funny because I was just talking about Sebastian Maniscalco. He tells a Jeffrey Dahmer story in his show, which is pretty funny. But um, when it comes to this sort, sort of situation, they said the people are tired of Murphy's obsession with making true crime more salacious than the real life. And I think that was the issue that a lot of people had with the Dahmer series, which I will say this, I cannot finish it. I don't know what happens at the end. All I know is the story from what happened in real life. I, I couldn't finish that series because it just felt like you were sensationalizing um, this whole thing with Jeffrey Dahmer and the abuse of these gay black men. And and we hear so many stories, me, because I pay attention to what's going on in regards of like the the abuse and, and unaliving of black trans women and um, the LGBT community of color, the abuse that a lot of that goes on and in in, that goes underreported. So I'm aware of that. But then when you see a white man like uh, Ryan Murphy exploiting all of this, it becomes a problem. And excuse me. And then in this movie, it seems like he's sexualizing the brothers, especially on a couple of the scenes that have transpired in this series. I've only watched the first four episodes, so I don't know how far down the you know the rabbit hole they go, but there was a scene in the film, I mean, in the show. I'm, I, I'm, I guess I'm used to seeing things in films, so I'm always thinking that. But it's a nine episode series where they show Lila and Eric kissing each other on the mouth. There's a lot of shots of them in the shower. There's a lot of nudity. There's even a scene of. Um, the actor playing Eric Menendez in the shower in jail flirting with this black dude. And I guess they formulated some kind of relationship of the sexual kind. Because then you see a scene where he turns to the side and you see old Eric's meat. I'm like, let me find out this boy packing all that meat between me down there. I'm like, is it live or is it Memorex? Is it is it um is it real or <laughs> or was it a or was it a prosthetic they was using? And the actor that plays Eric in the movie is gay, by the way, in real life. He's openly gay. So it says, the new series from Murphy tells the story of the real-life Menendez brothers, Eric and Lyle, who were convicted of murdering their parents in 1989. The show portrays their lives as exciting, sexy, campy, titillating, and more than a little incestuous. <laughs> but the truth was much darker, as the brothers were reportedly S.A. by their father for years with their mother's knowledge, which is what they claim as the reasoning behind why they killed their parents. And when you watch the series, it does make it seem like oh, well, the brothers basically just took the lives of their parents because they wanted the money. They wanted to be able, the father was going to take them out the will because they was going around the neighborhood robbing the, the houses and, and all the other stuff, and they got caught. And the father was like, you're out the will. And they made it seem like that that was the reason why they committed the crime. And the fact of why they took their mother out was because Oh, she, they wanted to put her out of her misery because she was self-medicating. The father had a girlfriend or girlfriends. The father was abusing the children sexually, SAing them. And remember, there were stories about him because he worked in the music industry that he apparently touched some of the members of Menudo. So there was also some stories that was going on about that. I think that was in a documentary or something that I was brought up. So, you know, the fans are pretty much pissed off at Ryan Murphy. Here's some of the stuff they said. I'm not going to pull up the, the tweets because it, it includes a clip from the from the show. And I don't know if Netflix does this thing where if you share anything from their situation, how they, you know, will chop your and demonetize the page or whatever. So it said the Menendez brothers were victims of S.A. who finally retaliated against their abusers, and this disgusting piece of trash has turned their story into an incestuous fanfic. Hell is not hot enough for Ryan Murphy. Well, God. 
<clears throat> Ooh, child the ghetto. And then um, another person said, well, hold on, because I got to refresh. I don't know why these tweets is like jumping, jumping like a Beyonce song. Well, that's this child. So it said, taking the story about two brothers who suffer from SA and abuse of their dad and turning into incestuous fantasy is horrid. Taking a story about, because I read that too fast. I know some people be clean. I talk too fast with things. So I'm going to read it again. Taking a story about two brothers who suffered from SA from their dad and turning it into an incestuous fantasy is horrid. Another tweet goes on to say, I'm actually speechless. Seeing them create this fan fiction involving incest between real life brothers is crazy to me, especially when they have been victims of abuse and incest themselves is absolutely vile. But it's not only viewers who are pissed. One of the subjects of the show, Eric Menendez, has seemingly responded from prison. Wait, they're still in jail? I wonder how long did they get? I don't know. I didn't get through the whole series. So I don't really know what they're, um, if, are they spending life in prison? I don't know. I got to do that research. Or maybe I'll just finish watching the show and I'll find out the details. <laughs> So according to the statement, Menendez called the show vile and appalling character portrayals of Lyle and me and disheartening slander. So it's a long one. So um, hold on as I pulled that up. So it said, in Eric's words, I believe we had moved beyond the lies and ruinous character portrayals of Lyle, creating a caricature of Lyle rooted in horrible and blatant lies rampant in the show. I can only believe they were done so on purpose. It is with a heavy heart that I say I believe Ryan Murphy cannot be this naive and inaccurate about the facts of our lives so as to do this without bad intent. It is sad for me to know that Netflix's dishonest portrayal of the tragedies surrounding our crime have taken the painful truth several steps backward, back enough time, back through time to an era where the prosecution built a narrative on a belief system that males were not as aid and that males experienced break trauma differently than women. Those awful lies have been disrupted and exposed by countless brave victims over the last two decades who have spoken through their personal shame and bravely spoken out. So now Murphy shapes his horrible narrative through vile and appalling character portrayals of Lyle and of me and disheartening slander. Is the truth not enough? Let the truth stand as the truth. How demoralizing to know that one man with power can undermine decades of progress in shedding light on childhood trauma. Violence is never an answer, never a solution, and is always tragic. As such, I hope it is never forgotten that violence against a child creates a hundred horrendous and silent crime scenes darkly shadowed behind glitter and glamour and rarely exposed until tragedy penetrates everyone involved. To all those who have reached out and supported me, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And this is how, this is disgusting that, yes, Ryan Murphy, old gay ass up here. Yeah, I can say that because I'm a homosexual myself. And this has been my problem with him, the, the fact that how he likes to First of all, all his American Horror Stories is trash. They need to just burn that show at the damn stake, especially that mess that came out last year with Kim Kardashian. The fact of that, if you thought to put her behind on something and think her ass was Meryl Streep, that should be blasphemous upon itself. Then we got this mess. Well, then first we had American Horror, well, not American Horror, so we had um, Monsters, the one with, um, what was it? Jeffrey Dahmer that pissed everybody off. Now we got this one. Then we have the other one with Aaron Hernandez, American Crime Story. I don't know how that one's doing or if anybody's complaining about that in regards of like the toxic masculinity and machismo culture and the fact that Aaron Hernandez was possibly closeted man and was trying to prove himself to be this macho dude or whatever and would do things to try to prove that side of him because there was a thing of gay and machismo and sports and stuff and people think that you can't be gay and like sports not every gay man likes getting their nails done doing dips voguing and doing drag and hair and makeup not all gay men do that there are gay men that like football that are just regular dudes that but just like having sex with men and there is a scene that is in um this show where this black inmate i don't remember if he had a name or what his name was it was late when I was watching the episode last night. <laughs> but he's like um, asking him if he was gay or whatever, asking um, Eric if he was gay or whatever the case was. And he was like, I don't even like that word. And I think a lot of men in that term is like, yeah, I like having sex with guys, but I don't want that label. 
aspect. That's a whole different conversation. There's label and lay labels. There's layers to this whole thing when it comes part being a part of the LGBTQIA element OP plus minus subtraction and division community. I put all the damn letters and acronyms and all the other symbols and stuff up in there. You know, we got a new one every damn week. So there was that. But then he was saying that he didn't really know if that was a thing if he liked men because of what his father did to him. Especially when there's a there's a whole episode where he goes and he's talking with his attorney and he's recanting, you know, not recanting, but he's going, you know, giving detail into what his father did to him. And uh, you know, the orals copulation, the cinnamon, and all this other mess that was going on with that based off the taste. So there was a lot of crazy things that was going on in this thing. And for Ryan Murphy to glamorize this because you found two hot actors and you basically want to spend the whole show doing all kinds of sexual stuff with them and showing it on the scene. I mean, in the scenes and stuff, I'm, I'm feeling uncomfortable watching this. I'm like, should I be getting into their story or should, should I be pulling out my plant pants and pleasure myself? I mean, I'm joking in regards, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, what are you doing? Are you trying to tell these people's story or are you trying to exploit them? for your own sexual whatever. So now I'm starting to look at Ryan Murphy funny. Like, it's it's the same thing that Angelica Ross said the other day when it was brought up about Bryce Shear Gray. For those of you who don't know who Bryce Shear is, he played Gaz on, well, not Gaz. I think Gaz is his other name. But he played Hakeem on Empire. And if y'all have not noticed, but lately, Hakeem been out here, how he making his coins out of us. I don't know if he's doing drugs. Allegedly, he might be. See, on that stuff. But he's out here doing adult, cinema photography with other men for a fee on OnlyFans. And Angelica Ross says something about how our elders, our gay elders in this industry should be protecting our young men coming up in here. And it's because you see the signs and stuff. Kind of makes me wonder about this. It's like when you have these Lee Daniels these gay men in high profile situations, these Lee, I'm just using them as an example, the Lee Daniels Tyler Perry, yeah, we're going to include her in this conversation, too, because you can't tell me that man like pussy. I don't care what he says. Girl, we know you a queen, a butch queen out in Atlanta. Stop it. Him, Ryan Murphy, and who the other one? Um, What is a bunch of them? <laughs> but I say, well, listen, say, when you're in this position that you create shows, when you create movies, you find these really attractive men up in the situation. We should be trying to be the mentors. We should be protecting a lot of these young people coming up. We shouldn't be exploiting them in this way. And it just feels exploitative with what this man is doing, what Ryan Murphy is doing. So it's sort of like whenever I watch him, I can't take him serious. Like when he did American Horror Story, how you got, um, what's his name? Richard Menendez or... um. I forget the damn serial killer name, the Night Stalker. The um when he had him in one of the ones with um when it when they ripped off Friday the thirteenth, basically, speaking of Angelica Raw, she was in that episode. But they all went out to the camera and it basically was a horrible ass rip off of Friday the thirteenth. And then they had a real life serial killer say, I don't like when he does that. If you're gonna tell a story, tell a story. Tell a, fi a fictional story. But then he tries to incorporate real life serial killers in situations and just be making stuff up. And I think that's what irritates people. So maybe what it is, is that we got to stop giving Ryan Murphy, the, you know, we got to stop watching his stuff because he just be out here just pulling stuff out his behind and thinking that we just supposed to just believe all the mess. So I say all this to say, you know what? I get it as an elder in the entertainment industry that you you know you want to hunt your hot male acts off camera. And if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. Oh, Brian Singer. That was the other one I was thinking of too. However, karma, it is quite pathetic for you to basically create sexual fan fiction when the focus of the series should be on the boys that, you know, they killed their parents because they were tired of being abused by their father. And the mother sitting there just, oh, I knew. But, bitch, why are you not protecting me from this man? Is it because you worrying about your place in the will? That, God forbid, you know, if, that you're going to end up homeless? That you're not going to protect your kids? And, yeah, in the 90s, they was not, um, you know, it was, you couldn't mention that um, any kind of abuse or stuff with boys or whatever because people did not think you could abuse boys. It was always girls. Boys were always seen as, like, the strong, you know, alpha, whatever. Girls were seen as the weaker gender. It's not until now that people are coming to the terms of, 
you know what? It is a possibility that boys could be abused as well. Now more of that is coming out. That's why I had to laugh during that scene when the when the when the inmate was in the prison with Eric because him and Lyle got separated because Lyle went and decided like a fool, put a piece of paper and was drawing an escape plan and the and the COs found it. So they separated them and put them in a separate prison. How he goes and says, Well, the the inmate says to Eric, who I guess they were having a, an affair with, or they were sleeping together, but they didn't really expand on that. It was implied. He was like, um, when it came down to the whole gay thing, damn, I forgot my damn train of thought again. It must be the coffee. I mean, maybe I'm not awake. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know what? Um, oh, was like, oh yeah, it's okay to be gay. You can be whatever you want. I said, not in no 90s. I don't know. Y'all, but as a look, you cannot bring 2023, whenever y'all wrote the script to 2023, because I'm guessing, because it came out in like the fourth quarter of 2024, that y'all probably wrote that script maybe last year. And then y'all started filming it earlier this year. And then now it's coming out after the edit and everything. No, y'all do say, oh, yeah, you could be gay. It's all right. No, not no 90s. Stop it. Like, come on, you're old. You shouldn't even know that. You can't sit up here and try to put Gen Z, Gen Alpha, BS talking points about, oh, it's okay to be gay in the 90s, because it wasn't. That's a lie. So I'm sitting there cackling at some of this dialogue. So they also said, especially when, the, when you know, they had the AIDS Holocaust going around. Like, sir, let's, let's talk about it. Come on now. Y'all, we can't be that damn forgetful or living under a damn rock. But then again, Janet Jackson been living under one all this time, so it could be, it's possible. So it also said, so what else did I say? Because I had to write, you know, notes in regards to my overall thoughts. So, yeah, the mother had to go too because she basically sat, she was self-medicating, drunk, taking the medications and, and all other stuff and with the liquor and just Looked the other way while the father was up in there doing all kinds of stuff to his sons and other people's sons, allegedly. So look, as an openly gay homosexual, I have to say, I do love seeing hot, scantily clad men on my screen, whether it's a big or the small screen. However, that should not be the main focus of this story when that you're trying to tell. And as usual, Ryan Murphy is taking real life stuff and bastardizing it. That seems to be his go his go to his M O. So that's all I gotta say on that. Now, what I want to know is, what do you guys think of this story? Have you seen the monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez series that's currently airing on Netflix? What are your overall thoughts? Do you agree with a lot of the people online as well as Eric who have come out and said that what these people are bringing up, they're y'all pretty much are bastardizing our story, and you're just making up a whole bunch of stuff for sensationalism and not really getting to the root of why these kids did what they did to their parents. And let's really talk about abuse in homes and how these people who have all this money and this power and influence, the things that they do to their children behind the scenes and why some people are drawn to having to take this measure, this drastic measure to stop the abuse from happening. So let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments down below.